Good day everyone. So, my topic for today is all about instructional planning. So, the overview. Instructional planning is a process of mapping out what learning targets to focus on, what materials to incorporate, what content specific instructional strategies and activities to adopt, and what assessment to use to evaluate how students are doing and to inform future planning. Although many expert teachers plan seemingly effortless way and reply on intuition and common sense such is derives from years of habitual examination and reflection of instructional planning. So the learning outcomes. At the end of this module, you are expected to share your idea about instructional planning, create gather and organize quality instructional materials and media in support of curriculum outcomes and diverse learning styles. 3. Visualize and forecast into the future of what, why, and how the teaching learning process. Introduction. Every diligent effort leads to satisfactory results. Most educators feel content and energized when their students exhibit successful outcomes. So, yes, I agree with that statement because the efforts of the teachers will not be wasted. Moreover, for educators to effectively perform the teaching duty, they need to be familiar with the Program Learning Outcome or PLO and use them daily with the classroom environment. Program Learning Outcomes are a description of the knowledge, competencies, and values a student displays at the end of the programs. So it helps students understand why this knowledge and these competencies will be useful to them. So now, let's define what is instructional planning. So the first meaning is preparation for teaching and learning, including construction of goals, objectives, instructional and assessment methodology. So from the word itself, planning the preparation is always part of it so the second one is systematic planning developing evaluating and managing the instructional process based on principles of learning and instruction and the third is the ability of teachers to visualize and forecast into the future of what why and how of the teaching learning process yes so the teacher should have the ability of visualizing the future in order to know what he or she will do during the learning process. Now, let's move on to the importance of instructional planning. First, it provides for logical sequencing and pacing lessons. Yes, it's very important for the smooth flow of your topic during your teaching. Second, economizes lost time and energy so if you have only one hour you need to budget your time provides for a variety of instructional objectives creates the opportunity for higher level of questioning and guide teachers provide directions for the teachers so that they will not be mislaid correlates instructional events from your last topic or past topics Develop a sequence of well-organized learning experiences. Present a comprehensive, integrated, and meaningful content at an appropriate level. So, these are the components of instructional planning. The teacher's attitude, beliefs, orientations, and teacher's social background. Next, the pupil's or student's age, background, knowledge, Motivational level of interest, the type of content that influences the planning process, textbook, and other instructional materials. The learning content which is characterized by the subject matter guidelines. Material resources which include equipments or tools for teaching. And the last one is the time frame which is considerable. So let's move to the principles of instructional planning. The first one is to understand the rationale of the course in the context of the goals of the educational institutions and to determine what content to incorporate into the course in relation to the set objectives, to clarify trust of the course, 
to decide on the reasonable time frame for the course, to identify the important components of the lessons, see if they meet, to determine the appropriate approach in view of the goals. So we have two types of instructional planning. It was the course plan and the mapping. So when we say course plan, it is a long-range teacher guide. It's usually called a map or course of study. So it says that it was a long-range teacher guide because it covers the whole semesters. And it includes not only the goals and the content topics will be taught and the student will do during the course. While the mapping identifies and details the content concepts, skills, and sometimes values to be taught for the entire course. So here are the guidelines for mapping. Be sure you understand the rationale of the course in the context of goals of the school. Second, be sure you understand the objectives of the courses according to the aid or district guidelines. Third, clarify the focus of the course, design to stress, subject matter, learners need or social needs. Next, determine if there is a special need or special audience, special instructional program for the course. Then, identify the important components, content, concept, skills, and values. Examine the components to see if they decide on important components so that they can be used as framework for your unit planning. Show the map to an experienced colleague of supervisor. Revise it in light of the feedback received. As you use the map, evaluate, modify, and improve it. So, let's move on to unit plan. A unit plan reflects long-range goals and means of organizing various aspects of the course of the study and serves as basis for developing a set of related daily teaching plans and educational activities. In addition, the unit plan lasts two or three weeks or longer and it includes several standards skills, and desired outcomes for interconnected learning. So these are the unit plan. Objectives, content, skills, learning activities, resources and materials, evaluation procedures. Lesson plan. A lesson plan is a very important tool of a teacher. It is a guide which includes the aims and objectives, subject matter, materials and devices to be used, time frame, anticipated problems and procedures, examples, motivation, teaching strategies, and techniques and evaluation for achieving the desired results. So, lesson plan serve as the weapon of the teachers when they are going to war because it was very important to them in order to guide them what they will do during their teaching. So here are the components of lesson plan. The first is the objectives. It is a statement that will what the learner will be able to do after completing the instruction. So, example of this is, at the end of this module, you are expected to share your idea about instructional planning. Next is motivation. This could be anything that will grab students' attention and get them think. So, this could be riddle, anecdote, candies, chocolates, or other that will give them motivation to Pay attention to you while you are teaching. Next is outline. It is used to present the main points or topics, methods, the ways in which teachers share information with students, materials and media assignment or homework. Then there are three types of lesson plan. The mastery learning lesson plan, 
thinking skills lesson plan, and flexible grouping lesson plan. Writing objectives. Principle for goals and objectives should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, result-oriented, and time-bound and terminal. And we have two types of objectives. The performance objectives and the process objectives. Performance objective is a specific end result that contributes to the success of the unit or organization at that an employee is expected to accomplish or produce. So this type of objectives was a specific that will tell you what will you gonna do after this topic. And the second one is process objectives. Describe the activities, services, or strategies that will be delivered as part of implementing the program. Process objectives by their nature are usually short term. So development and designing lesson. Here are the different types of lesson. Development lesson, supervised study lesson, appreciation lesson, and application lesson three pieces of developing lesson the initial phase the lesson proper and the conclusion phase assessment is the ongoing process of interpreting the evidence of what a student can do and meaning is means finding out what students know and are able to do its emphasis is an observation of what is happening now so examples of assessment is quizzes assignments recitations or any other performance test that will measure the knowledge of the student after the topic so here are the purpose of assessment to assess in student learning to assess and prove student learning to identify children's strengths and weaknesses to assess the effectiveness of a particular instructional strategy so assessment were very important because assessments are tools to measure the student where they are good and bad and in order to guide them and also to know the teacher that their strategy were good or effective and bad so we have three teaching strategies the purpose of brainstorming discussion and brainstorming purpose of brainstorming is to get as many ideas to the surface as possible no matter how usual they may seem and discussion it is student exchange and share ideas about the lesson or about the assigned tasks when planned properly, it can provide the students activities that will help develop thinking skills and allow them to engage in higher level thinking. This always happens inside the classroom, in between, between students to students and teachers to students. Brainstorming. It is used when there is an issue that has to be clarified or a problem that calls for a solution. The basic design of a brainstorming session is presenting an open situation and creating an environment where students feel free to contribute. Three ways conducting discussion. Whole class discussion, a small class discussion, and a panel discussion. When we say whole class discussion, all students in the class exchange and share ideas about given topic with the teacher as a leader. So example of this is recitation. Collaborating to teacher based on the topic that he is teaching or she is teaching. Small class discussion. This provides teachers opportunities to note students' behavior, attitudes, and abilities to express ideas. Teachers find discussion situations as a valuable source of information about students' needs, personalities, and backgrounds. So this way of conducting discussion is the teachers were finding out where the students were good or bad. Example of this is the teacher asks open-ended questions that encourage students to think critically about the course materials often in a particular text. And the last one is panel discussion. This strategy affords the presentation of a variety of perceptions on a single topic. So this is a technique to teach the student to work as a group.
demonstration. This strategy designates the teachers or designated individual to model the behavior of presentation, analysis, and strategies. It calls for carefully planned presentation that shows how to perform an act as procedure. So there will be a person demonstrate how the task will be performed. Then the familiar debate. This is strategy in which two sides of an issue are presented and argued by two or more individuals within a given time period. Then the class debate. Instead of having two contending parties, it involves seven members in a group assigned to debate on a topic. So there are similarities in the familiar debate in class debate. It always has an issue that are presented and are used by the student. But their difference is when it comes to familiar debate, there were two groups or sides that will argue the presented issue. While the class debate, it involves only seven members in a group and every individual has a time limit to discuss their sides. So these are the responsibilities of each member to perform. First is the proof. Possessions is the defender's attempt to marshal evidence in support of the proposition being debated. Pro is the favor side. And the kun. Position seek to find evidence and develop a line logic of that opposes the propositions of being debated. One is the in favor side of the debate that will be performed. So they are the one will find information that are useful that will be used during the debate. So here are the three phases in conducting mock trial. Briefing. Pre-planning in which the teacher task is the identification of the case drawn from the unit of the study. This always held before the task that will be performed. So it includes the, the instructions. Conducting the trial. Simulation of the conduct of the trial. Debriefing. Asking questions like, what was that case about? Who were the participants of mock trial? How were the roles played? What was the issue? What facts are relevant? Role playing. This strategy is used when resolving problems or dilemmas and in creating empathy and understanding for another person's view or behavior. Then simulation provides students with activities that are designed to provide Lifelike problem-solving experiences. They provide a presentation of some phenomenon, event, or issue that actually exists or existed in the real world. It can represent historical events, international affairs, family problems, military operations, school politics, or any activity. Lecture. It is an well-prepared oral presentation of a lesson by the teacher. This most widely used exposition strategy when properly organized and planned for. This is a teacher-directed strategy designed to help learners understand and relationships and organize bodies of knowledge. So this is self-explainable. This is always happen during the class. Teacher always present a presentation during his or her lectures. So this will serve as assessment, the activity, based on the topic I have been reported. What factors should teachers consider when planning activities? What are the reasons for instructional planning? And what are the elements of instructional planning? Thank you for listening to my report and that is all. And again, thank you.